James. Oh, there yes. you are. Yes, hello. There's my beautiful tiny baby brother, James. How are you, buddy? I'm good. What's up? Uh, nothing's up. Um, I'm at home. I'm in front of a microphone. Recording a podcast. I mean, oh yeah, how's that going? It just started. We're about thirty-seven seconds in. I'll keep you posted throughout, and I'll, uh, let you know what the progress feels like. Word, word. I'm eating some stashos, um, drinking beer. I also have water here in case the beer make my throat go bad, which sometimes happen when I drink alcohol in a podcast recording. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. If you've ever listened to an episode of one of our podcasts, and at the end I sound like, I want to say thank you to Dragonfly, uh, that's because I've drank too many alcohol and not enough water. Um, our hair is reaching a kind of a singularity. We've, we've, we've both got a, a kind of like, I'm getting a side swipe thing. Mm-hmm. Down here. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. I'm doing that to look like a huge dork. Why are you doing that? Because my hair is getting crazy long <laughs> and it has nowhere oh. else to go. <laughs> fair, fair. Like if I, hold on, if I, I can move it down onto this side here and uh-huh. it's, uh, I don't know if you can see that, but it's very, it's about to your ears. It's very, very long. Yeah. I'm approaching a sort of a, a Shinsei Nakamura kind of singularity over there. <laughs> Obviously, that's who you're aspiring to be with this haircut. Yeah, I just got to shave this side and get some extensions on the other side and put on a bunch of red pleather. And then it's, I'm, you know, I'm the king of strong style himself. Yeah. Me personally, I'm going for that Crispin Glover in Back to the Future look. <laughs> <laughs> on point, dude. I'm nailing it. <laughs> My body is a roadmap of pain. Um, did I tell you that I've been watching a lot of professional wrestling lately? You didn't, but your Twitter did. Yeah, I've been watching a lot of professional wrestling lately. Dude, wrestling's great. It's very good. Uh, my friend from work gave me the his login info for his uh, New Japan um, website like subscription. So I've been watching, like I watched um, the last big tournament that they had. And I've been going back and watching a lot of somebody online recently posted a uh, Google Doc spreadsheet of like all the best wrestling matches between NJ, like New Japan wrestling matches between now and 1973. Yeah. And I opened up that old spreadsheet and I hit control F and then I typed in Shinsuke Nakamura and I've just been watching all of those um, (laughs) because he's a fucking idol and a sex symbol. Um, But uh, I also watched WrestleMania this past Sunday. How was it? Not as good. Mm. Shinsuke was there. He did punch AJ Styles in the dick, which was pretty cool. But yeah, for the most part, not great. Who won? Who won WrestleMania? Yeah. I mean, there were a lot of matches. Who who won? Who won the whole thing? AJ Styles. Nah. But then after AJ Styles won the match, Shinsuke like picked the belt up and got down on one knee, and he was holding the belt up like. Uh, I concede to you, I'm giving you this belt because you want it. And then when AJ Styles came over to grab the belt, Shinsuke Nakamura kicked, punched him in the dick and then kicked <laughs> him a lot. And it was really great. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. Mm-hmm. Um, Would you like to record a podcast? I'm not against it. Okay, you're not against it. You don't seem that enthusiastic about it. You want to walk me through how you're feeling about the whole thing. Let's do it. Oh, okay, great. Just kind of just uh, all that was all it took to just nudge you over into the uh, solid yes. It's like a meter. It fills up kind of slowly, but like it was rising that whole time and now I am ready. Okay, great. We're there. Well, then let's before that meter dips back down, let's just uh let's get into it. Yeah. to do a big old haters cast intro <laughs> yep i saw that but that's not what we do here nope not till we're, deadpool 2 comes out no we're more friendly here we're a little more personal not a big old scream just a nice close to the microphone hello 
welcome to Movie Improvie. Hello. Your world's first, your world's, your world's where you live, your world's first and foremost film repair podcast. I'm your licensed and board certified film repairman, Film Stressman. And I'm your executive film life form, James Kettler. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, just going to rifle through all of them, huh? I told you I'm trying shit out. Film form. <laughs> I'm your executive film form. <laughs> I don't know if you've noticed. Sounds that the, like, it sounds like t- a, a euphemism for like nonsense. What is all this film form? You have not noticed that the past couple weeks I've been introducing myself as film stressman. <laughs> I have not. <laughs> <laughs> How long has that been going on? <laughs> uh, today and last week at least, and possibly the week before that, I don't remember. Wow. Yep. Nope. Just a film form and a film stressman. Nice. Yeah. We're mm-hmm. we're just two good cellulite. No, cell cell you what's this film called? Cellulite. Cell you film celluloid. Celluloid boys. Not cellulite boys. That's a different thing. Um, James, my brother whom I love. Mm-hmm. Would you like to um I know that we have a a film to repair this week. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, about which I have many thoughts and opinions. Mm-hmm. But I'm not personally, I'm like I'm not quite ready to repair a whole film. I feel like I need to like kind of practice a little bit. You know when uh, when you watch a baseball game of baseball? Y- yes. And they've got boys out on the field who are pitching balls at hitters and then slapping it with bats. But then you've mm-hmm. also got boys on the sidelines and they're not quite ready to throw balls at those big slappy bats. They they need some practice. So they're just yep. throwing balls to like a friend behind a net. <laughs> Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I'm kind of I'm not I'm not ready for ball slapping yet. I'm kind of on net throwing level now. So I'd like to maybe practice with you, my good friend, on something I wish there were something like a film, but like like smaller. Like easier to digest, more compact. Like a short film. Yeah, like a short film, but even shorter though, still. Like a oh. not not oh. a sizzle reel. But um, like a like a trailer? Yes, yes. Like a fi- well, I got real high on that one. Uh, <laughs> yes, yes. Like a film trailer. Uh, I'd like to I'd like to warm up with some net throws with my friends on a film trailer, if that or two, if that's okay. Yes, I yes I will allow this. Thank you, thank you. Uh, do you, did you happen to see that I sent you a film trailer in the Slack? No. For a movie called Supercon? My phone does not give me Slack notifications, like, mm. half the time. Sometimes I do. Uh-huh. Sometimes I see that little hashtag in my notification bar. Other times it doesn't tell me anything. All right, I got it. Interesting. You got it, though? Let's yep. give that a quick watch. Ooh, Red Band. Yeah, so there's going to be some crude sexual content or some maybe some cuss language. Oh, good lord. That man, Wilhelm screamed into a poop explosion. Yeah, he did. And that was the highlight of the trailer. Um, wow. Just a lot of people getting kicked in the balls. Yeah, a lot of just nut punch and nut kick and nut hit with a sword kind of jokes. Somebody thinks testicular damage is real funny. It's not somebody who's Kevin Smith. Thinks testicular damage is real funny. Um, Ryan Quantum. Oh, was just... that actually a Kevin Smith movie? Yeah. Because it struck me as a Kevin Smith movie, but I didn't see Because his it looked name. really bad and vaguely nerdy? Yes. Yeah, that's his brand. Uh, Ryan Quantum just got to be in every heist movie now? Just all the bad heist movies he's got to be in them? Was he in Hurricane Heist? Sure was. <laughs> yeah why not he's he's got a thiefly face so how do we fix this one it's about a bunch of goons robbing a comic-con uh how about they steal money from uh stan lee and the estate of bob kane and they give it to the estates of steve ditko jack kirby and bill finger Ooh, that's real good i like that a lot you take it instead of this movie which is just we take it for ourselves it's more of a more of a um, 
more of a historical Robin Hood kind of a vibe where it's like, I'm going to take it from those men who have who have robbed you across history and give it to those who have always deserved it from the beginning. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Just because a person's name is stupid like Finger doesn't mean he doesn't deserve all that good Batman money. Yeah. Yep, 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 yep. What if we go one he, step further with it, and what if it's Bill Finger himself who's doing the robbery? Back from the dead? No, I think just set it back in history times. Maybe it's like... um, While he's writing the Batman comics, he's inspired to do some crime fighting of his own. Yeah, and the crime is Bob Kane stealing all of his fucking credit, and the retribution for that crime is more crime in the form of Bill Finger stealing all that Batman money. Nice. It's, uh, yeah, it's the finger heist. <laughs> you just wanted to say that, didn't you? I did want to say it. And then the final scene of the movie is he's, he's, he's very old and he comes back for one last job and he steals a bunch of money from Rob Liefeld just cause. Yeah. Cause he don't, he didn't earn it. He can't even draw feet good. <laughs> <laughs> so Mr. Finger did pass away in 1974, which means that. He was alive for the, you know, Batman 66, Adam West era. Mm -hmm. Something, and that's probably the time in which our heist occurs. Okay, okay. Batman's just become like a phenomenon again with a TV show. He is, he's something like a phenomenon. Um, you know, he's a, he's, a, he's a big cultural touchstone now. So here's the thing. Yeah. Batman TV show, Adam West. Debuted in 1966. Mm-hmm. Was uh, last year on the air was 1968. Yeah. Uh -huh. So I think you know when Mr. Finger is going to target the thief Bob Kane, it's going to be right after that show comes off the air. Right? It's going to be like at, at the peak of Batman's fame. Kane has already raked in all this Batman cash. He's ruined the image of Batman with this campy bullshit. Right? Yeah. Uh -huh. So it's, I think it's going to be right after that, right after it comes off the air. And I think that's when Finger is going to is gonna um, put together his heist to go steal all of that Batman money. So I think the title of our movie sort of writes itself, and it's going to be Finger Man 69. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, obviously. Yeah, Finger Man sixty nine. Mm hmm. Should we re should we repair another trailer? Please. Do you have any, or should we go to the old Apple trailers? How about this? Is a little out of our wheelhouse. I see a movie here called Another Kind of Wedding. Hmm. Okay, let's see what this is all about. Oh, it's got that bad trailer music. At least it's not a slowed down pop cover. What was another about that kind of wedding? Kathleen Turner and Wallace Shawn really slumming it in that one, huh? Yeah, wow. What, what about that wedding was unlike other weddings? Because it seemed like pretty typical bullshit. Another, I think it's not another kind of wedding. I think it's another kind of wedding. <laughs> <laughs> we got a lot of these kind of weddings. Where people like sort of kind of like get, get married. married. Yeah. yeah, I think this is another like kind of wedding, I guess. Like, <laughs> hey guys, we're kind of like having a wedding. I don't know. Like, come if you want. Like, I hate this idea of like, ugh, monogamy and like heteronormative bullshit. <laughs> but my parents just gave me $40,000 and we've rented a really incredible venue, I guess. I don't know. And I got this. Like, I don't know, like, I spent, like, a lot of money on this dress or whatever, which is, and it's white, I guess. I don't, they tell me it's white. But I guess we're, like, kind of going to get married. So, like, if some of you want to, like, sort of come to my destination bachelorette party in the Cayman Islands. And then if all of you want to come to, like, this kind of, like, I, I don't know, it's like a ranch with lots of exposed light bulbs and hanging vines and stuff. And which is kind of like, there's a guy there. He's like sort of like a justice of the peace, I guess. Like, and then he's just going to kind of like sort of marry us. It's weird, but like <laughs> you have to come and give us gifts. <laughs> it's another kind of like wedding. I don't know. 
So what would be a wedding that really was another kind of wedding? Ooh, another, like, we've never seen this kind of wedding before. Yeah. Uh, that this movie could be about instead of this bullshit. Yeah, I think it would be, um, I think it would be a dog. Mm-hmm. And the dog's most hated natural enemy. Mm. A, a shark. big old anthropomorphized Stonehenge head. Oh, <laughs> you mean an Easter Island head? Yeah. <laughs> yeah <I didn't> know. <laughs> no, that's not what I meant. I mean a Stonehenge head. <laughs> <laughs> so just, so just a faceless rock. I did mean an Easter Island head, but now I feel like I have to put my dollar down on Stonehenge head. <laughs> <laughs> you don't. You can just. <laughs> You can just admit the mistake and we can move on. In fact, yeah. you already have, so let's move on. So this dog is like, his owners take him to Stonehenge. And uh, he, you know, his first instinct is any dog's instinct, right? Just pee on it. But then mm-hmm. he sees something special in the eyes, in the eyes that are carved into that big old Stonehenge. And... And he really sees like a reflection of himself, but also like also like a foil for himself. Like he's like, you know, I see the things in this big old, big old featureless monolith that like I like about me, but I also see characteristics in my in this big old featureless monolith that are like things about me that I wish were better, you know, and like things about me that like attributes in a person that I wish that I had. Um, mm-hmm. Like I'm kind of a, as a dog, I'm kind of an introvert, you know, like I'll only hump somebody's, somebody's leg. If like I've had a lot of one-on-one conversational time with that person, um, I don't do good in yeah, group I, yeah. settings. Like at the dog park, I always feel like kind of, I'm kind of standing over near the tree and all the other dogs are running around in a circle and I don't really know how to engage with them in a group setting, but like this huge feature lift stone monolith, um, you know, like what Stonehenge? What Stonehenge, James? It's a circle, right? Like it's by definition, Calendar. it's a social gathering, and this big featureless stone monolith is really good. Like it's really gregarious, it's really good in these sort of group settings that me, the dog, the introverted dog, isn't good in. And like uh, I'm kind of like, it's really flattering that this this featureless stone monolith who has these extrovert characteristics still see something to love in me and I really appreciate that and I'm going to ask them to marry me and now we're going to get married and it's really another kind of wedding that no one's ever seen before <laughs> that went on so much longer than I anticipated really because this is like the 13th episode of this podcast you think you'd expect this by now <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say it's the first human extraterrestrial marriage Oh, cool, 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 cool. So we've had first contact and this mm-hmm. is first marriage. Uh, yeah. So walk me through that. Uh, you know, we made contact with the aliens. I'm going to say 15 years ago. Mm-hmm. So we're in we're in sort of an alien nation kind of a world. Remember that show? It was a movie. And no, it was yes, also I a do. show. It was also a show, James. Really? Yep. I've only seen the movie with James Caan. Yeah, the show's good. Uh, Anyway, no, not like that, though, because there's not, it's not an allegory for race relations, and there's not tension. It's just like, we're the newbies. The aliens showed up, and they're like, hey, join the uh, intergalactic. That's the name of the alien race is the newbies? The newbians? No, we're the the newbies. We're the newbians? They're the humans? Aliens show up, and they're like, hey, come join the uh, space alien uh, special group council up in space mm-hmm. humans you you did it you're there and yeah it's 15 years later and now an alien and a, and a and a human being have fallen in love and they're gonna get married oh what are they like what's their story how'd they meet they met on the uh mm, mm, floating headquarters of the whatever the name of the organization i said earlier is you didn't and you know uh, the human being just saw that alien uh, munching down on a big old plate of slugs. Alien slugs or earth slugs? Both. Uh, it was like a slug salad. <laughs> there were a lot of different, a lot of different slugs in there. Um, this is a sampler platter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
you know, Earth slugs, Jupiter slugs, uh, antimatter slugs. Those those are their least favorite. They pick all of those out of there. Well, because you can't let them touch the other slugs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's just something about the way the slug slime was glistening off her uh, alien carapace. Just they were really drawn together. Mm-hmm. And the human being walked up and he was like, hey, you want to split a slug? She she cut a slug in half. The alien cut a slug in half with its magnificent spiky tail, and they they had their first date. All right, so that's the meat cute, but that's not a whole romantic comedy. I need what what is the 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 underlying issue and the relationship that comes to a head and leads them to separate, and then how do they come back together for the finale? Oh, okay. So there's a meteor passing by the station that gives off a special kind of radiation that makes the alien. Uh, thirst for human blood. Oh, shit. I hate when that happens. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, the alien spends the middle part of the movie, like, hunting down the human being like a xenomorph, trying to drink up his blurred. And he's like, but you love me. Susan, you love me. Please remember me. Please remember it's me. Tanthony, like, you know me. We shared slug together. Can't you mm-hmm. remember? And she doesn't. And then, oh, and then guess what happens? What happens? She eats him. Mm-hmm. But then the meteor goes away and the radiation wears As off. As meteors do. N- uh-huh. And she's normal again. So she she just, she barfs him back up and brings him back to life with alien magic. Oh, and then he forgives her? Yep. And then they're together forever. But what happens the next time a meteor come around? Uh, look, she can bring him back to life, so they'll work through it. So he's just going to get eaten every time there's a meteor? The meteor only comes around like once every 87 years. He's going to be fine. Probably. That sounds more like a comet. <laughs> meteor, comet, asteroid. Look, space rock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We can fudge <laughs> it. It's not a sci-fi movie. It's a romantic comedy. Like We can fudge the yeah, science. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rules aren't important. And that movie is called I Love You So Much I Could Eat You and I Will. I was going to say You Rock My World. Ooh, also good. But Let's go with that one. <laughs> in parentheses <laughs> before rockets says space in parentheses. So it's like you space rock my world. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nailed it. Actually, it's so in parentheses. So it's you, the word you, and then it's open parentheses. And then it's another open parentheses, and then it says mm-hmm. outer, and then there's a closed parentheses, and then it says rock, and then there's two closed parentheses, and then it says space. You outer rock space my world. <laughs> you outer space rock my world. Mm. Okay. Did I say that wrong? It doesn't matter. You did. You said, yeah. <laughs> Let's fix a movie. <laughs> okay. <laughs> hey, speaking of aliens from uh, places... Not outer space. No, but like, you know, inner. Mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. James, what movie are we fixing this week? It's your pick. You done selected this one. I sure did. We're doing Monster Trucks! Monster Trucks. A Nickelodeon movie. Mm-hmm. Um, about monsters that live deep down in the, you know, in the meat of the earth. Mm-hmm. And uh, they got dug up by Rob Lowe and coming to wreak havoc on the world's trucks. Yep. They climb inside them trucks and make them go fast. It's a 30% fresh on Rotten Tomatoes. I'm going to be completely honest up front, though. I didn't think this movie was that bad. It's a pretty fine movie. It was fine. It's a fine movie. Like, it is. Like, okay, he, I you can watch it for 10 minutes and be like, okay, I know what this movie is. And the movie's like, no, you think you know what I am, but I'm going to be exactly that. And then it ends. Mm-hmm. And I think for kids or whatever, like, great, you know? Yeah, it was written, like, by a five-year-old. Was it? The That's impressive the, for them. I mean, they didn't actually, like, write the screenplay, but my understanding is that there was some, like, big hotshot movie producer, mm-hmm. and his five-year-old son was like, Dad, I want a movie about monster trucks and it's about monsters who go inside trucks and make them go fast and he was like well i have the money and power to make that happen so that five-year-old sounds like us 
on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We just need a yeah. good, rich film daddy. I mean, look, I, I picked this movie more for its alliance with our brand, I think, <laughs> than I did its level of badness. Yeah, definitely. It really is lines up completely with something that we would do like, hey, have you heard of Monster Trucks? But what if the monster actually was one, though? Uh-huh. uh-huh. It's definitely a movie <laughs> improvie fucking movie plot. Again, yep. we just, hey, all those loose Hollywood rich ass producer men. We need a new movie daddy. So if you want to come be our movie daddy, make a fucking, you know, Rosemary's baby too. toss baby. This time the baby's the weapon. <laughs> we will take your fucking money, dude. We will. We'll do it. Hey, Batman v Snowman, Dawn of Just Ice, just waiting to be financed. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. We'll give you final Warner Bros. We don't care. Warner Bros. You're going to be ready for another Batman reboot in like three years. We're mm-hmm. right here. Well, now that we've gotten that out of the way. Rook, should we summarize this movie real quick? James, summarize this movie in 10 words. Go. Boy find monster. Bad guys want monster. Boy help monster escape. Ah, that's 11 words. I'm sorry. You're fired from the podcast. Nuh-uh. It was 10. Say it again. Boy find monster. Mm-hmm. That's three. Oh, I was counting bad guys as one word. Yep, oh, you're right. That was 11. Oh, okay. Well, I'll give it to you on technicality. Thank you. Um, James, do you have a really good idea for how to fix this movie? Here's my problem with this movie. Here's here's my thing. It's yeah. not it's not a problem with this movie. It's my problem with this process that we do. I thought of an idea first uh that was really, really good in my opinion, and changed the way I saw the movie. And then that was the only thing I could think about through the entire movie. <laughs> well, let's hear that one first. No, 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 no. I don't want to do that. I wanna okay. Do you want to hear that idea first? Yes. So it's this it kind of becomes a horror movie by way of this this sort of concept. Mhm. It's this exact movie but it takes place in the Cars universe. Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just oh man. Yeah. So it's just Lightning McQueen and uh tow truck the cable guy. And all their friends just periodically Tater. getting their minds and bodies taken over by a giant, horrible squid monster. Yeah, you remember at the beginning of this movie where it's at the car dealership and all those cars have big old holes through them? Mm-hmm. I think that's how this one starts, except it's like a Law & Order episode. <laughs> the police car's there investigating. Yeah, he's investigating the scene and... Uh, they're all dead. And then also, but like other cars and trucks that like, first of all, let me back up. What happens to a dead car or truck in the cars universe? Do they bury it or does it just go to junkyard? That's an excellent question. I haven't, I've only seen the first cars movie. So you think I'm they not explore that in the second one. Yeah. They may have explored that in the, in the second one with, with the spies and Michael Caine or the third one. Who knows? But I think either way, this thing's bringing back like a dead husk of a truck to life. And animating it in a hideous way, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but it also so kind of like kind of a mix of like uh, invasion of the body snatchers and Frankenstein's monster. So there's a there's a book series that I really loved as an adolescent, um, and it's Brian Lumley's Necromancer, uh, not Necromancer, uh, Necroscope series. And the Necroscope mm-hmm. series vampires are this sort of like um, trans universal um, beast, like alien creature. And it's like a slug that goes inside your brain and it turns you into a vampire. And then you, you have, you can have transmogrification abilities and you can turn into weird shapes and stuff and also feed on human blood and live forever. Uh, so I think it's like that, but for cars. Okay. Okay. So this thing like takes over your body and lives inside you and makes you super fast and super good and super mortal, but also it eats up your insides and sucks the oil out of your friends. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Along those same lines, May and I just watched Hellraiser 2 last night, which is a terrific movie. Yep. But you know in Hellraiser, and I mean the Hellraiser, the first movie and the second movie, how it's like, Here's a blood stain. We're going to feed it other people's blood in order to like bring back this person from hell gradually. Yes. And like first it's like a skeleton and then it's like muscles. And then it's got all muscles. Yeah. Yep. So 
I wrote here carbound car razor too, which I think the same thing, but instead of blood, it's oil. So it's like still the cars universe, but you've got like the skeleton of a car and you're just splashing oil on it and gradually pieces of it are coming back from car Ugh. hell. Ugh. Watching the membrane of those giant windshield eyes like stretch through that hole. Yeah. But anyway, Ugh. those are two ideas. Um, but literally, like, this whole movie, but just in the Cars universe, I could not stop thinking about it this entire movie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, on that tip, I mean, this, it's kind of tangentially related, but uh, this picture I drew to a company, it does look like the Cars. Uh, first idea, dumbest idea, truck monsters. Mm-hmm. Monsters that look like trucks. Oh, that's a really good picture, James. You did a good drawing. Thank you. It looks like if a crocodile existed in the Minecraft universe. <laughs> is what you've drawn there. Excellent. I'm happy with that. <laughs> yeah, Go so on. I don't feel the need to elaborate further on that oh, one. Oh, okay, truck, great. Truck monsters. Uh, another idea, um, Bigfoot versus Bigfoot, monster versus truck. So it's the real Bigfoot. Sasquatch. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the the swamp ape versus um, a truck named Bigfoot. Yeah, yeah, monster the monster truck Bigfoot. And they what do they they task they tussle down in the ring. They tussle down in the monster I, truck ring. I think that Bigfoot obviously Bigfoot the monster truck is like a. I don't think I don't think it has a driver. I think it's a, a sentient entity in this movie. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think Bigfoot, the monster truck, is just driving all up through Sasquatch's forest, just wrecking shit. And Sasquatch is not very happy about that. What if Bigfoot, the monster truck, was sentient and its own creature, and Bigfoot, the monster, was driven by a human person? Why? Because <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> So Bigfoot the monster truck is a car style sentient truck, monster truck, but Bigfoot is more of like a like a master blaster kind of a situation. <laughs> <laughs> like a krang type scenario. Yeah, exactly. They krang to the old Bigfoot. Ah, oh, poor guy. So um this movie remind me a lot of an old radio drama called The Thing on the Forbal Board. The thing on the what board? The thing on the forble board. Forble. Are you familiar with the thing on the forble board? I'm not even familiar with the word forble, so no. They explain what a forble is in the in the radio drama, the thing on the forble board. James, if you haven't heard the thing on the forble board, um, in all seriousness, the, the best thing I can recommend to you is to, like, when you go to bed tonight and turn out all the lights, put headphones on, and listen to the thing on the formal board because it's so fucking creepy. It's insane. All right. It's seriously scary. But so it was an episode of this old radio show called Quiet Please. Um from you know radio show times. But the thing uh -huh. on the formal board is all about a uh oil rig who digs too deep and disturbs the habitat of a fucking hideous creature um who comes up and, and starts wreaking havoc. And I just kind of want a thing on the formal board movie. That sounds rad. Yeah. That's it. That do you have what's okay. your next right. idea? I don't here's the <laughs> thing. I could elaborate, but I, I honestly just want you to hear the thing on the formal board and I don't want to spoil any of it for you. Yeah, um it's, it's generous, thank you. Yeah, seriously, go it's so good, dude. The sound it makes. My god, the sound it makes. You just you have to listen to it. <laughs> Um, so similar, I think, to uh, how you thought of the Cars thing and couldn't watch this movie the same way. Mm -hmm. uh, Bess couldn't watch this movie the same way because 10 seconds in, she was like, what if this was just Shape of Water, but it was this? Yeah, so I got a note here called The Shape of Oil. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Yep. This movie is structurally identical to The Shape of Water. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, it is mm -hmm. structurally I fucking identical. Yep. The only thing is, like, you got you know um, Tom Lennon instead of Octavia Spencer instead of Octavia Spencer <laughs> and Jane uh, Jane Levy instead of uh, Richard Jenkins. Yeah. Well, I would. Mm, 
Yeah. I would say Donald Glover instead of Richard Jenkins, but sure. Mm, yep, 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 yep. Nope, you're right. You're right. Uh, yeah, no, The Shape of Oil. Definitely this boy fucks this fucking squid monster. They fall in yeah. love and they fuck each other. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. And then they drive their big monster truck around. Yeah. I think he definitely has to fuck it as a truck, too. Well, I think instead of oil, probably the monster, you know, has to... It's jizz. <laughs> then why is it called the shape of oil, Phil? <laughs> <laughs> You're absolutely right. It's, uh, we have to change the name. It's now called the jizz of oil. <laughs> Remember in um, Call Me By Your Name where he bites into that apricot? (laughs) (laughs) Uh Uh-huh. Yeah, it's just like that. (laughs) (laughs) Did you see Call Me By Your Name yet? Because last time I talked to you, you hadn't seen it yet. I haven't seen it yet. Oh, so you don't know what I'm talking about. No, I do. I've seen the... It's been memed a million times. Where he bites into the jizz-filled apricot? Where he bites into an apricot. Is it jizz filled? Yep. Yeah, I didn't know that part. You can probably cut most of this jizz talk. Why? <laughs> you gotta see that movie no, though. Phil, man. I'm it's definitely really leaving in the jizz of oil. You got yeah, for that part for sure. But you gotta dude, you gotta see Calling by Your Name. It's so good. I know. I so, have a long list. On that subject, actually, so now you can't cut it. Um I don't really care anymore in movies about like boys being in love with girls. Like I don't give a shit about that. Mm-hmm. Like anytime that happens in the movie, I just lose all interest. If it's like a cisgendered boy is in love with a cisgendered girl, and I don't fucking care. Like even if it's like at least told from like a female gaze, that's a little bit better. But like in this movie, where this boy's like, Boo, I wish I could. Use my truck to get women. Like, I don't fucking care. But um, when he's on the school bus at the beginning of the movie and the boy in the really gaudy truck drives by, they share a look for a second. And for Mm -hmm. one split second, I hoped that maybe they were in love. So I got an idea here. It's just called Gay Off-Road Boys. (laughs) (laughs) I think it should be set in the South. And -hmm. I think they should go mudding together. Yeah, they go mudding together, and they just love to drive their big old nasty trucks out in the dirt and kick up mud, and then also, you know, make Fuck love to them. Yeah, make yeah. love to each other. Um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's kind of like a cross between like "Call Me by Your Name" and this movie, and <laughs> you know, maybe a little bit of like "Love Simon" in there. Like, I think it's like a like a nice, just like a nice teen love story. Like a nice, it's like a Toby Keith song about falling in love, mud and off road, except both of the people involved are men with with penises. Right, right. Mm -hmm. And I know, I I know we have. I mean, that's very on brand for us. I'm, I'm, I'm all on. That's what I was gonna say. I know we have like an easy default thing for us. It's like a tick. It's like just make it gay, but like also just make this one gay though. Yeah. Um. So, hey, my wife Megan has joined us on the movie improvy. What's up? Hello, Megan. Guys, uh, if you listen to the Haters Cast, you'll recognize me from the Haters Cast. It's making a special appearance tonight. Yeah, it's a special appearance, May. So, do you know? Real quick, do you know what we do here? So. You've come to my work where James and I work in the film repair department. <laughs> yeah, you've got all our hammers to the basement. Mm-hmm. We've got all of our hammers. You see all the pneumatic tubes with yep. movies spilling out of them. I see it. I see it. So do you know what we do here? Do you have a good sense of what our operation is about? I mean, you told me a little bit about it, but um, please fill me in. Well, we take movies that are bad and we repair them and make them good. Okay. So the movie we're talking about right now is a movie called Monster Trucks. What? Okay. It's a movie about... Uh, uh, a boy who loves to fix trucks 
and uh, Rob Lowe drills down into the earth and releases a bunch of monsters, and then the monsters take over trucks and make them drive around. This is not a real movie. This is 100% a real movie. It's absolutely it's a real movie. Rob Lowe is in it? Mm-hmm. Rob Lowe is in it. As what is, is Danny this rated? Glover. I think it's rated PG. It's yep. a Nickelodeon movie. Don- yep. Daniel? Daniel? What it? Glover's in it? Dan- not, 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 not Dong Lover. Gambino, okay, right? I was like... Not Dong Lover, Danny Glover. Danny okay. Glover. Okay. I think I said Donald Glover earlier in yeah. the podcast, well, like, actually. <laughs> I um, was like giving him a nickname. Yeah, um, no, not, not Childish Gambino, Predators 2. Okay. Lethal Weapon. Um, Lethal Weapon. I haven't seen him. So anyway, James and I were repairing that movie. Um, How was the movie? Bad. I mean, it was fine, actually. It was fine. Uh, I don't want to run you through all of our ideas that we've already pitched for the movie. That's fine. So what I'm going to have, what your role here, May, is going to be, mm-hmm. is if you have an idea for how to fix the movie, just shout it out in the microphone. Okay. Otherwise, I'm looking for some, some evaluations on both our remaining ideas for how to fix the movie and then on the one that we land on. Okay. I want your critical, I want that haters cast critical eye. I can be a hater for sure. Okay, cool. So James. Yeah. Uh, we just finished talking about gay off-road boys. Yes. What more ideas you got? I got one here uh, called Pinky in the Brain, but Aliens. Okay. So there's that scene where Thomas Lynn is like feeding the two big squid boys that are in the tanks. Mm-hmm. So I'm picturing like two aliens in, you know, Area 51 or wherever in some big government lab. And they're always trying to bust out, but they're bumbling and foolish, and they never succeed. So it's like a uh, species. Ye- uh, I don't know if I've seen species. Yeah, I don't know. That. I think I'm Have thinking. You not seen species? I think I'm thinking of mimic. They like aliens. Mimic is really not at all similar to species. They're both very good. Do you know that Guillermo del Toro made mimic? Yeah, that's a really fucking good movie. Mm-hmm. Honestly, the sequel is actually pretty good also. What's um, it about? James, have you seen... It doesn't matter. Okay. So, yeah. So, it's uh, the the big rats. Are they... They're big rats in a lab this time? N- no, Phil. They're aliens. Mm-hmm. And the aliens look like big rats, though. No. I think they uh, look like and- grades. So they have like rat features. <laughs> what? No. Do they carry like a piece of pizza around with them, and it's really like funny and meme worthy? Well, you're just making Pinky in the brain again. Hmm. Um. So there's a smart one, and the other's insane. The other one's in- is that Pinky in the brain is is Pinky insane? One is a genius, the other's insane. Oh, you got a whole song you wrote for the movie. Oops, um, I mean, it's the Pinky in the Brain theme song. Yeah. <laughs> so I got an idea here. It's uh, so in this movie, um, Danny Glover is in a wheelchair. Mm hmm. And they also reference the fact that the, the, the trucks, um, the titular trucks are sort of wheelchairs for the underground monsters that got dug up. Yeah. Uh-huh. So I thought, what if we just get rid of all these, you know, um, able-bodied folks in the movie and just made it about people in wheelchairs run by monsters? So I got an idea here called Monster Wheelchairs. <laughs> that is That's very funny. good, and I like it a lot. Yeah. Yeah, so, like, it's, you, you know, it's a movie about folks who, have, who are in wheelchairs, uh, and then a bunch of nasty tentacle monsters get dug up out of the slime. And make their wheelchairs really powerful, and they turn them into a bunch of Dr. Octopuses. <laughs> but like real Dr. Octopuses, like the tentacles yeah, will but be they're real, good. not metal. Yes, and also- They're good. good. They're not villainous Dr. Octopuses. Good organic Dr. Octopuses. Yeah, a geo-dio, if you will. A godo. A godo, yeah. What else you got? Uh, so you remember earlier- when I said that uh, Truck Monsters was my dumbest idea? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I was wrong. Here's it's my not? dumbest idea. There's a scene where the boy is sitting in his truck imagining what it'd be like to drive it, and he's making all the sound effects. Yeah, did they know what age the characters of this movie were going to be when they wrote it? Because it seems like they thought they were writing for 10-year-olds. I mean, they could be. 
the the main character in this movie is just as convincing a ten year old as he is a sixteen year old. Mm-hmm. Uh, anyway, uh, just the whole movie where all the sound effects are just mouth sounds. Well, that's uh, that's the wind. The wind rises. Yeah, but the wind rises did it some of the time. But I want all of it, like score. Like I want every sound effect a mouth sound. Okay, everything so that's not um, the actors talking, mouth mm-hmm. sounds. So like even when they're opening doors and stuff, there's some guy going like, yeah. So it's um, it's Star Wars, right? Mm-hmm. And Luke is there, and he's driving a speeder. And he's oh, good sound. there's a bunch of stormtroopers up ahead of him. He's got to catch up to them, shoot them down real good. Roger, Roger. Pew, pew, pew. Oh, but he just realized they weren't actually stormtroopers. Each stormtrooper was two Ewoks standing on each other's shoulders in stormtrooper costumes, and he shoots their helmets off with his gun, and then the Ewok is underneath there, and they're like, oh, you got us. <laughs> oh. James, you... <laughs> James, you're very good at sounds. <laughs> you're very good at sounds. Can I tell you you're something? Like I might be pitching Academy. this idea because for a period of time when I was a child, I thought that people like there was a person who just made the sound effects for movies and TV shows, and I aspired nope, to do that job. Yeah, that's literally not a job. I mean, you make them, but not with your mouth. All right, so John Hurt just got brought back onto the spaceship, and he's lying on the gurney. And he's in a lot of pain. And oh, what's that? A bunch of blood just splayed across the front of his spacesuit. And now something's coming out of him. Go. My chest feels heavy. <laughs> 10 out of 10. Yeah, very good. So that's not so much a story idea as it is like more of a movie making magic kind of idea. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. Don't care about the plot. Uh, I just want that. So I got one here. Is you know on when you take the SATs? Yeah, huh? No, um, I mean I don't. How, I never took the SATs. How it's like this is to this as this is to this. Yeah, huh? Mm-hmm. So in this movie, there's a bunch of nasty aliens who come out of the ground and they chug oil, and humans wheel them around on carts because they can't move very good because they're too heavy. Yeah, huh? So I got an idea here, and it's sort of like an SAT test. And it's got, you know, those like colons where it's like one colon is is two and then two colons is like as is two. Yes. Mm -hmm. So what I got here, it says monster is to me as people is to Lilliputians as oil is to beer. What's Lilliputians? Lilliputians are tiny little guys from Gulliver's Travels. Mm -hmm. What's Gulliver's Travels? Gulliver's Travels is a story about a guy who meets a bunch of tiny little guys, and then he pees on their town. Why can't you call them Thumbelinas? Okay, so <laughs> so monster is to point. me Why as can't people <laughs> are to Thumbelinas as oil is to beer. Yeah, Thumbelinas is a more approachable word, honestly. <laughs> like the common folks like me don't know what. Lula. I already forgot what the word was. Yeah, borrowers. No, people don't know. <laughs> yeah, the borrowers. Yeah. No. You don't know Thumbelina. borrowers? I are? do, but Thumbelina is better. Okay. Thumbelina is just it. one person, though. So, but she's tiny, and we know she's tiny. She's a mm-hmm. Thumbelina, like the size it's of your thumb. It's known that she's tiny. I really like May's role on this podcast as like a like a movie producer <laughs> who's like tearing apart our baby that we've come up with. <laughs> Why can't you just call them Thumbelinas? I like that better. <laughs> but do you understand? My it's me. I'm the alien, and I had to be fed beer by these tiny people who wheel me around on carts. Mm-hmm. Yep, 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 yep. And maybe like they've got a bunch of like steam technology, but in, the steam is all instead of coal, it's all powered by beer. But also, I drink it. Mm, okay. <laughs> this is just a fantasy you have, huh? Yeah, right? <laughs> it's just okay. something you want to happen. You just want to get right, and so, wheeled around on a cart by small people who give you beer. So my last That's idea here you spoiled already because it's called The Shape of Oil. So do you have anything else? I have one more. So there's a whole lot of, you know, like, boy and his alien kind of movies. 
E.T., Mac and me. May knows she's a real <laughs> Mac and me girl. Shut <laughs> up. I will Sick never callback. live this down. I don't Sick love callback. Mac and me. I'm an E.T. girl through and through 100%. Get out of here. That Mac and me shit. Anyway, right, yeah. I'm done. So Super I went, 8, <laughs> et cetera. So I want one of those movies, but the alien is like the ugliest possible fucking thing. Like I'm thinking like a... John Carpenter's The Thing or a Brundle Fly of a situation. Mmm, love that. But it's still just, you know, this very earnest boy is like, no, guys, we gotta help him. So it's at the end of The Fly, instead of Brundle Fly getting shot to pieces by, like, shotguns and, um, like, real torn apart by Gina Davis and, and her shitty beardy boyfriend... Mm-hmm. Instead, he escapes out the front door and drags his nasty, slimy, desiccated affront to God of a body down the street. And there's like a couple of boys maybe shooting some hoops outside of their outside of their house. And they're like, what's that? And one boy is like, yuck, and runs away. And the other boy is like, oh, no, I got to help. This, this puppy's sick. I got to help him. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> I have a question. What do you got? So how do you come up with these weird ass ideas based on the movie that you watch? Because they're very not much like. I just think of them and write them down. Yep. So it could be like inspired by like literally anything. It's like kittens yep. inspired by kittens. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yep. Okay. I'm just watching. So I'm watching this movie and uh, there's a there's a monster that burrows through cars. And in my mind, I'm like, what if this took place in the movie Cars? That's an idea. I love it. Mm. That's the one. <laughs> That's the one. <laughs> okay. Uh, We're done here. James, Wrap it up. Do you have any more ideas? No, that was it for me. Do you have one that stands out to you as your favorite? We know what May's favorite is. I, I, I mean, like look, the cars girl, idea she's the because producer, this... I think we have to do that one. I am okay. the producer, but I have another comment. Uh huh. What if they were superhero cars? <laughs> So, like, what if it was, like, My Hero Academia, but they were monster trucks, you know? No, I didn't know. So, they were, they all have superpowers, but they're monster trucks. Okay. Okay. So, that's a totally separate idea, but we can go with that, too. Yeah. No, wait, wait, wait. I can melt the two. I can melt the two. Are you ready? Yes. So, here's our idea. It's a Cars universe. Yes, it is a Cars universe. And um, <laughs> some of the cars and have I'm superpowers. <laughs> well, hold on, hold on. So most cars are born uh, from their parents, um, like cars are. Live birth, no eggs. No eggs. And their wheels are proportional to their bodies, and the things that they can jump and run over are pretty regular. They can run on a road. They can maybe go over a speed bump. That's it. But then now, you know, something has started to happen. New sort of cars are starting to be born, and they've got real big wheels. Got big wheels. Got flames on on their skin. They've got flames on their skin. They've got, you know, big old truck beds. They've got nasty teeth on the front of them. And they can do things that no one's ever seen a car do before. They can leap in incredible tall bounds. They can go faster than a speeding regular car. Yep. Um, they can crush up anything you put in front of them. They can smash down regular cars they into tiny pieces. They can move things with their minds. Yeah. It's incredible. Ooh. And no one's ever seen the like before. And yeah. so, uh, you know, society could crumble and fall to these new beasts and their incredible powers, or society can integrate them. And what yeah. happens is society integrates them, and they create a school for monster trucks mm-hmm. where they can train and learn how to be protectors, how to be, you know, good. sort of the new icons yeah. of yeah. society. And not be evil. Just use your power for good. You know? Use your power for good. For good. Um, and so these heroes are there and they're being trained and we've got all these different personalities of monster trucks and monster cars and beastly vehicular creatures. Mm -hmm. Um, but so in parallel to that, a villain emerges. Of course. And we don't really know what it is at first. We're starting to see these car corpses scattered across the world. They've got big holes bored through them. Mm -hmm. They've got their oil is sucked dry. Yeah. No one knows what's happening. James, you know what's happening though. It's the squid monsters. It's it a is a monster. squid monster. It's come to Earth from beneath beneath the ground, from beneath where anyone thought possible. So, because in this world, the Cars world is a is a post apocalyptic world, right? The yeah. Cars world is a post human world. 
Humans mm-hmm. have all died out. Yeah, no mammals humans. have all died out. Yeah, it's just cars. The beasts that crawl and fly in the sky have, are all died, and it's just cars and planes now. Yeah. So we thought. But squids. But the squid is real. The squid, and the is squid real. controls metal and it hungers for metal flesh, and it slurps up the oil. Wow. So now all of our monster trucks are monster truck heroes that have been training at this new school. They've got to band their powers together and try and defeat this new evil. Is it- they can take over the corpses of dead cars and control them and make wow. them run. Yeah. yeah. So you think your best friend has died in the field of battle, but the next day you see him and he's speaking to you and you say, hello, how are you? I'm back. Bring me your oil. And you're like, Trevor, you never used to say, bring me my oil. Trevor, you're a zombie now. You're a zombie now, Trevor, the car. Also, like Trevor, it. you still have a giant hole through you. You're leaking oil all over my carpet. Please get out of my Trevor, house. Yeah, get the fuck out of my house, Trevor, and never come back. Yeah, I think that's it. I think that's the movie. That's it. I'm well, the producer in this Bingo Bongo, this. we just plotted it out, too. Yep, this mm-hmm. is what I get paid to do, guys. Thank- you're welcome. Yeah, no, we appreciate your uh, your input. Um, yep. What do you, May, what do you think this movie should be called? Mm. Monster Truck Monster. I was going to say Monster Truck Academia. But that is Hero too... Truck Academia. But that's too close. Hero Trunk Mon- Hero Trunk Monster School. Why trunk? <laughs> Cuz I meant to say truck and then I <laughs> fucked it up and then I doubled down on it. Phil, stop Monster doing that. <laughs> Just correct your mistakes. Monster Eat Monster World. No, I think it's Hero Trunk Monster School. Who says you're in charge? <laughs> If James likes it, then you guys can have that title. What was your title? I just said Monster Eats Monster World. Mo- like a dog eat dog world, but like a monster eat Monster Eat, monster eat world. Truck World. Monster Eat Truck World. But uh, yeah. It's like Jimmy Eat World, but with monster trucks. Oh you know what Jimmy Eat World is? Yeah, he a band. He he band. He writes I think songs. It's, I think it's Monster Wait, what was it? Monster Eat <laughs> Trunk World. Monster Eat Trunk World. Yeah. Truck Are you World. Edibles? I think it's just called Truck World. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's called Truck World. <laughs> Bucket. Oh. I think it's Truck World and then a colon and then. Um, Why are you guys crazy with the Monster colon? Town. <laughs> Stop. Your titles are so goddamn long. <laughs> Always. Crazy for colons. That's, that's what our, the title of the movie's that's called. Our slogan. Okay, so the movie's called Crazy for Colons. <laughs> no. <laughs> No, it's really not called that for real. I'm making Sorry, the what's it called? vote. Somebody... It's called Monster Eat Truck World. Monster Eat Trunk World. Um, <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> that's it. If no one says something in three, two, one, that's the title. We got it. All right, that's it's it. It's done. That's the title. Monster, so Monster Eat, Eat Trunk, Trunk World. World. Trunk? Trunk or truck? Truck. <laughs> Monster Eat Truck World. It's definitely trunk. Um... <laughs> Okay, guys, we got our title. All right, let's cast it. James, now, mm. what are you looking at? Who are we talking to? Abby pooped in the hallway. <laughs> oh. Um, James, I think this is a real good contender for Wait, a, a randomized Wait, do you need to deal cast. with that, or is someone else dealing with that? Yeah, give me one minute. Okay. Mm. I like a sappy pose. Okay, I've cleaned up the dog poop. Thank All right, God. So I think this is a random generated cast one, all right? Oh, for sure. Do we know now, what our characters uh, are? That's what I'm going to ask. What characters are we looking at here? So I think that um, we need a... Hold on. So I think we need an Izuka Midoriya. I think we need like a um, like a main character who maybe like was born a regular car, but was the first regular car to ever get accepted to monster truck school. Mm-hmm. Okay. They became a monster truck later. Yeah, and I think they are, um, maybe they're our, like, our sympathetic hero, like our protagonist audience circuit, et cetera. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, they're just trying their darndest. They're letting their paint get scraped off. They're letting their wheels get flattened. They don't care. They're going to be the best at monster truck school, regardless of what kind of car, regular car body they were born with. Mm-hmm. And a lot of the, and a lot of the born monster trucks don't, are, they're not supportive. They don't, they don't like them. James, you've seen My Hero Academia, right? No. God damn it, James. Oh, God, what the James, fuck is have wrong you seen you? Legion? No. I don't care yeah, about Legion. You're not related to us anymore. You have to see My Hero Academia, dude. 
I do have a Crunchyroll subscription, so. Well, what the fuck? It's so good. The man. Legion, though, too. Like, can you tell him? Um, so probably uh, enough. Uh, our movie is The Shape of Water, and our lead sympathetic character is gonna be David Hewlett, who is whom? Oh, you know. Uh, Dave Hewlett. He he's is in the Cube. Yeah, he's the main from Cube. He's in Shape of Water uh, and Rise of the Planet of the Apes. Yeah. And um, who is he in Rise of the Planet of the Apes? One of them. You know, just uh, <laughs> he's in Stargate Atlantis. You know, mm-hmm. something. You know, if you if you see him, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. just Google his name. Yeah, I was like, what? I don't know. What... Hellcats. That's something that. Didn't you watch Hellcats? I did watch James Hellcats. Did. This I don't think that's the same one though. I, I don't know this man. He's definitely the main guy in Cube. It doesn't matter. Um, he's our main character. He oh. is the voice of our main car. This, this is a big break. Rev fast Nasty. wheels. <laughs> okay. I like Rev fast Rev wheels. Nasty fast wheels. <laughs> People call him the Rev. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I think our next character is probably the um, the monster truck that went to school with our regular car coming to monster truck school. Like went to you know they went to high school together before graduating, and going to monster truck school. Okay. Yeah. Uh-huh. And I uh-huh. think this is um, you know he always picked on our main character, um, but now that they're in monster truck school together, like he's gaining sort of begrudging respect for him. Okay. You know. Okay, so who's gonna play um, this and guy? Maybe they're like rivals in Monster Trucks. Absolutely rivals. But they definitely have a history together. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, so the movie that we're casting them from is The Wall. The Matt Damon Great Wall movie? No, no it's just called The Wall. No, it looks like an army movie. It's got John Cena in oh, it. Oh, John Cena's in it. Well, there's three people in it? Yeah, this movie has three people in it. So John Cena it is. Wow, yeah, there's it's John, really three it's actually people. John Cena. It's John Cena. Right. It's just John Cena. There's someone who's just a voice. And then there's Aaron Taylor Johnson. And yeah. John Cena. And Which, that's literally it. Aaron Taylor Johnson is the dude that's in that. What's that movie about drugs with Blake Lively in it that came out? Stop talking about Blake Lively. Oh, but I know is, what you're talking about. Uh, yeah. Savages. Savages, yeah. He's in oh, that. He sucked. Yeah, it was Oliver really Stone bad. sucks. But like, I did watch it. It doesn't matter because it's just John Cena. Can it's I, John yeah, Cena. <laughs> nothing matters. It's John Cena. And it, he's actually like meant to be in this movie anyways. So He was born to be a truck. Yeah. <laughs> he looked, yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Wow, the stars really lined on this one, guys. They really did. And that star was John, Cena. John Cena. Superstar John Cena. John Cena. Thank um, God. What's, so what's his, his monster truck name? Super good question, man. James, what is his monster truck name? Uh, muscle Baby. Uh, Mud Tough Rig. I think it's Muscle rig. Baby the Muscle Truck. <laughs> I'm sorry, James, what did you say? Mud Tough Rig. Mud Tough Rig versus Muscle Baby. Oof. I got to give it to, I think I'm going to combine the two. Okay. And call it Muscle Tough Baby. Yes. <laughs> so I'm really enthusiastic about everything that's going on. The muscle tough baby is like he's the one who like was called upon to be the next hero of the monster truck world, and he's super resentful that uh, whoever our last the rev name was the rev the rev is kind of usurping his place. Well, he didn't but think he had competition. He's gonna gain a lot of well earned respect. Yeah. Well, he thought you know the path was paved for him, but uh, so let's. I think we should cast our um, sort of inspirational. And tough but fair monster truck school teacher who's really leading these guys up to, for their confrontation against the monsters. This mm-hmm. is exciting. Mm-hmm. So the movie is the legacy of a white-tailed deer hunter. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Never heard of that. Oh, a bunch of people that don't even have pictures. Oh, it was just not loaded. Yeah, and our performer is cowboy. Oh shit! I'm sorry. He looks like, yeah. His it's name cowboy. is Cowboy. Uh, his name uh, is going to be Cowboy for this one. Yeah, it's Cowboy. They're, he was in. Their name is Cowboy. The, yeah, The Fate of the Furious was a movie he was in, and uh, and Three Billboards and American Animals and Masterminds. Oh, shit. 
So Cowboy is a former police officer and detective turned actor living in the Smoky Mountains of North Carolina. Yeah, it's going to be Cowboy for this one. Cowboy yeah. is our inspirational. I don't understand. I can't find this person. This one. Who are we talking about? Send it. No, Send we're talking it. about Cowboy. Send it to him. Can you spell his name, please? It's Cowboy. C-O-W-B-O-Y. Look up Cowboy like two uh, words? three billboards. No, no one. one word. I just sent you Cowboy. This can't. This is not real. No, it's Cowboy for this one. What? Look, he lives in the mountains. He acts in movies. His name is Cowboy. I don't know what's so hard to believe about that. Okay. Oh, he was in Black Panther. No, he wasn't. Yes, he was. I didn't see it's that. On his yeah, it's IMDb Cowboy. Page. It's fine. It's Cowboy. Um. <laughs> So I think we need a voice for our main evil squid alien who's destroying all of the cars and trucks. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Is it cup? Who's gonna be? Who gonna be? And I think they're probably kind of sympathetic because it's like, look, I gotta eat, you know. But ultimately, they are Can't evil and they do need to be destroyed. They are evil and they do need to be destroyed. But like for a second, you're like, no, I understand their motivations. I understand that. Like, I also need to eat. Mm-hmm. I also like food. Yeah, and from the movie, Call Me By Your Name. <laughs> it's not going to be Army Hammer. Shh, shush. It's <laughs> you're praying to the gods for. Uh, It's uh, going to be Michael Stahlberg. Who that? It's the dad from Call Me By Your Name. That's, no, it's not. Okay, that's a good one, too. No, is it really? Yeah, it's Michael he Stahlberg. He's young in that photo. Yeah. He young? He's from A Serious Man. And he's also from The Shape of Water. He's the scientist in The Shape of Water. Oh, my mm-hmm. God. Why so many Shape of Waters? Because this is The Shape of Oil. I think no, I love it this isn't. guy. He's... Call Me By Your Name is fantastic. Mm-hmm. James hasn't seen it yet. Oh. James, what are you even doing? I have seen Shape of Water. Well, Which is one of my favorite movies ever. Mm-hmm. Probably, my number, probably my number three movie of 2017. It was my favorite. Honest. What are your top two? My number one is Your Name, which is the best movie ever made. Was that? And then my number two is Call Me By Your Name, which is in a weird coincidence. You liked Call Me By Your Name more than Shape of Water? I did, actually. Yeah. I didn't. It's very good. It inspired me to be in Italy. But you got to admit, Your thought. Name is the best movie ever fucking made. Ever made. It's so good. That's the yeah. anime about the boy and the girl that switch bodies. Come on, James. Get it together, James. Get it together. I, mean, I knew. Stolberg and your first heel turn as a villain. Cool. The giant squid we monster. Got our, do we need anybody more? Anybody more? Do we need anybody more? I, uh, do we need a love interest? Ooh. I don't think we need a love interest. I do think we need like the... Uh, but I love romance. The goofy, upbeat friend who's maybe like not too, not super good at monster truck school, but they got the heart but he and looks they're going to get there. And they look good. Yeah, they look great, and they've got the heart. They look that little um, who's that kid from My Hero Academia with all the purple bubbles all over him? Ew, gross. Oh, you lost one. So the movie is for the best friend. Best friend. Best friend. The movie's Murder on the Orient Express. Ooh, what? good cast. Yeah, lots of people. A lot of options. Uh, I do have. Uh, giant up veto power. Fair. Yes. Yep. We all do. Pappy. I don't know. Is this even the right cast? <laughs> Does it have Kenneth uh, go Branagh? Out, and... No, it's not. Uh, Something that doesn't seem right. Yeah, hold on. It's fucked up. Let's see. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think it's just like an order of appearance. So that's fine. So uh, we got an Elliot Levy as our, uh, you know, bumbling friend. Whoa, what that the... Phil. What? The random Hamlet actor that we cast as the snowman in Batman v. Snowman, Dawn of Just Ice. Yeah. He wasn't a random Hamlet actor. He played Hamlet. He's in this movie. In what movie? Murder on the Orient Express. He's the first name oh. listed. <laughs> He's Pappy? Oh my God, the young policeman. Yeah, he is in this fucking movie. What the hell? What a crazy <laughs> random happenstance. Well, let's make him be our best friend. Yep. Papa Siedu, you're back in the game. Papa Siedu, welcome back to the movie improving, my man. I'm calling him Pappy. 
You are our hapless best friend. Not a good truck. Not a good car. What you are good at? Befriend. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Good mm-hmm. friend. All right. Uh, is that it? Have we cast our cast for what was this movie called again? Monster uh, Eat Truck World. Monster Eat Truck World. Like Monster Jimmy Eat <laughs> Trunk World. <laughs> truck World. Truck Trunk. Monster Eat Trunk World. Trunk. Colon Truck World. No, no. Airborne disease, aka Truck World. <laughs> Look, I'm the one who's gonna be uploading this to Libsyn and putting in the episode title, and it's gonna I'm the say producer. Monster Eat Truck World. And this is why I don't do this show. So everyone I'm will the know producer. that you were dishonest in your interpretation because this movie is called Monster Eat Trunk World: Colon Truck World. James is a liar. Damn it. No. <laughs> May, how are you on his side? There's a colon in it. I'm the producer. I say whatever I want and it goes. That's that is the job description of a producer. <laughs> Anything I say goes. That's on, the only description. But I, I, I just I just want to be clear that you are going back on your previous podcast is over. It's time to say some thank yous. Oh, it's over. Wait, the podcast is over? The podcast is over. Wait, we didn't even it's over? I think we're done. So you cast it and then you're done? Yeah, we, we plotted it out. We cast it. We titled it. And that's it. We titled it. That's it. That's what we do. Oh, okay. What else do you think should happen? I don't know. I, I've only listened to one of your podcasts, two episodes. Mm-hmm. I don't listen to podcasts much. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I'm never like by myself. I oh, know that's not true. Anyways, it is over. Podcast is over. Hey, thank you, um, May, for showing up at the at the last second and really helping to, you know, steer you really, steer you, you guys really in the right direction. On this one, you really sealed the deal on it on this mess. Thank God for wine, you know, it really um, gives you ideas. It lubricates the old idea factory. I like yeah. to call my brain. It, lu- it lubes your brain up. It lubes it up. Thank mm-hmm. you, James. Thank you're you, James. Welcome. Thank you, Phil. Thank you to. You're welcome. Thank you to God. Thank you, you know? to God uh, for, and Jesus for, for every day. You know, every day that we're alive here on earth, it's a gift from you. Thank you. Thank God. you, Satan, as uh, well. Also, all mainly fun thank stuff. you to Satan, the devil who lives in hell, because you're the really responsible for all of our successes. And we want to party with you. And we do want to party with you. Hit us up, movieimprovey at gmail.com. Um, thank you to Cusick for the song Dragonfly, which is our theme song. Thank you to you, the listener, for listening. Um, you can follow us on Twitter, Movie Improver. You can follow me on Twitter at Phil Stressman. You can follow James on Twitter at Doc Professor Man. Do not try to follow me on Twitter. She does not have a Twitter. You can't follow her there. And her tweets are private. And her, her tweets, tweets are, are fucking hella private. private. She doesn't have a Twitter, and if she did, her tweets would be private. Yeah, 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 yeah. So don't even give. Don't even try to look at at Castaway, No doubt. Yeah, it doesn't exist. A, that's not a real Twitter. Castaway May doesn't exist. Dot com. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> castawaymay.com is not real so bye <laughs> uh, yeah so thank um, you please like and subscribe on iTunes mm-hmm. Apple Podcasts um, tell your friends about it it's a really good show we think um, it's a very good ha- podcast you can share it we'd, we'd like that a lot graffiti it on the streets yeah just on the streets baba dee ba day baba dee ba day just no big deal graffiti movie improving it you know if you do it uh, send a picture and you'll get a year supply of a um, bean in jail. You'll get a year supply of being arrested and in jail because that is a crime and we do not condone <laughs> it. I was going to say something better, but it's okay. Yeah. You, you'll you get a year supply of you in prison for a crime. So. You're not fine. Don't encourage our listeners to do crime. Graffiti is art. It's also crime. Whatever. I um, this podcast. <laughs> follow Facebook, you know. Is that it, James? Do the Facebook. Well, there's one other thing, and May, I want to yes. ask you something. Uh-huh. Hey. Yeah? Hey, May? Yeah? What part what 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 part of um oh. Portland were you gonna revitalize in that old project that you were working on? What's going on right now? Remember the big gates? It's got big gates there. Uh Chinatown? Yeah, it's, hey, Chinatown. it's Chinatown. It is Chinatown. What is this about? <laughs> <laughs> Are you trying to like open up old wounds? No, it's just it's it's Chinatown. It's what the fuck is this about? <laughs> May, May. Y'all are May, sick. May, May. What? It's Chinatown. <laughs> it's is it something Chinatown. to do with 
the movie you guys just watched? Fuck both of you <laughs> before you even answer. <laughs> oh, man. I don't know, James. It's Chinatown. It's Chinatown. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. I got to go big story.